Welcome back to Social Studies. What are family traditions? Exploring our own family traditions and those of others in the world around us. Lesson 12. All right, you're gonna need this sheet again because today we're learning about Las Posadas. Go ahead and hit pause if you need to run and get a pencil and your paper, okay? We're gonna start out with a story, The Night of Las Posadas by Tommy DiPaolo. In a little village high in the mountains above Santa Fe, participants ready for Las Posadas. Sister Angie was so proud. Her niece, Lupe, and Lupe's new husband, Roberto, had been chosen to portray Maria and Jose, Mary and Joseph. <clears throat> Sister Angie had been in charge of Las Posadas for years and years. It was she who trained the singers who followed Maria and Jose as they made their way around the plaza in old Santa Fe and finally into the courtyard of the Palace of the Governors, where an empty manger waited for the birth of the Holy Child. Now, Sister Angie said, speaking to the two men who would play the devils, here is a picture of what your faces are going to look like. She wanted to make sure they knew how to paint their faces red with black eyebrows and beards, and that their red satin costumes were just right, especially the red capes and head caps with the pointy red horns. The devil would snarl and hiss as he tried to keep Maria and Jose from finding shelter. The plaza was so big that two devils were needed to rush from balcony to balcony without being seen by the crowd. Sister Angie always made the costumes for Maria and Jose herself. Blue and white for Maria, brown for Jose. Stand still, she told Roberta. Lupe, I hope he isn't as fidgety at home. Oh no, Tia Angie. He is just nervous about being Jose. Ah well, Sister Angie said. Let's just go to the church and look at Maria and Jose. They will give you inspiration, Roberto. Miguel Avedeo, the San Taro maker, had made a beautiful carving of Maria and Jose for the golden jubilee of Sister Angie the year before. Fifty years as a sister, Father Vasquez had put the carving in a place of honor in the church. As Christmas drew near, it was moved near the altar rail. They stood looking at Maria and Jose on their way to Bethlehem. Just think of the carving and try to look like them, Sister Angie told them. I will, promised Roberto. At least we don't have to worry about a burrow. Las Posadas didn't have a burrow in the procession. Maria and Jose walked. The burrow had only made problems, so they had stopped using one years ago. Finally, it was the night of Las Posadas and Sister Angie came down with the flu. There is no way you can go tonight, the doctor told her, walking in all that cold weather, and they say that snow is coming. They will just have to get along without you this year. For the first time, Sister Angie would not be at Las Posadas. Don't worry, Tia, Lupe told her. We will make you proud this evening. In the streets leading to the plaza, men were busy 
putting Futritos in place. They would be lit as soon as it got dark. Wood for the bonfire was stacked on the courtyard just off the plaza, ready to be set ablaze when Maria and Jose entered. Well, one of the men said, it looks as if it will be a white Christmas. Snow is on the way. Even as he spoke, flakes drifted down, but a little snow never stops Las Posadas. Up in the village, the singers, the candle bearers, and the devils piled into their cars. They wanted to get down the mountain before the snow, which was beginning to fall heavily. Do you have the music? Where's my guitar? Wait, I forgot my gloves and earmuffs. I'm so nervous. It's a good thing you're not Maria. You'd faint. Me, me, me. I hope my voice is loud enough. I've never sung the devil before. It was the same every year. Sister Angie looked out of her window. Yes, she wiped away a tear as she saw Roberto's old pickup pull up outside. Lupe and Roberto got out and rang the doorbell. They wanted Sister Angie to see them in their costumes. Ah, oh, Maria and Jose, you look wonderful. If I had my way, I'd offer you shelter right here. Now give me a kiss and be off. Roberto and Lupe were the last to leave the village. Roberto's pickup had been acting up lately, and the deep snow didn't help. A sudden skid and the motor died. What to do? I'll walk ahead and see if I can get some help, Roberta told Lupe. Wrap up and I'll be back before you know it. Down in the town, everyone had gathered. The snow had tapered off and was falling gently. The farlitos were lit. The plaza looked magical. Where are Lupe and Roberto? Father Vasquez asked. It's almost time to start. The guitars were tuned, the horn player had warmed up, the singers were ready, even the devils were ready, but no Roberto and Lupe, and everyone knows that you can't have Las Posadas without Maria and Jose. Suddenly, down the street came a young couple. The man was leading a burro carrying a young woman. The candle bearers led the way, followed by Maria and Jose. The musicians followed, and then came the singers. Out into the plaza they went. Everyone knew their part, even the borough. They stopped at the first door. Oh, let the holy couple in, give them shelter. Let Maria rest so that the holy child can be born, they sang. Jose knocked with his staff. Maria looked down from the burrow and smiled sweetly. But the devil appeared. No, no, don't let them in, he sang out. Look at them, how poor, how wretched. They have no money. And the crowd booed and shouted. The procession moved on, knocking on one door after another. Sometimes the devil popped out at them, and the crowd booed even louder, and sometimes they knocked and no one answered. It was one by one, most beautiful Las Posadas ever held. Even the young woman playing Maria was about to be a mother, just like the mother of the Holy Child. Perfect. They reached the gates to the courtyard. Once more they sang, asking to be let in. This time, no devil. The gates opened wide. The bonfire blazed and everyone rushed in. A little pushing and shoving, but that was all right. Everyone wanted to be near the manger. 
Well, you certainly save Las Posadas, Father Vasquez said, turning to thank the young couple who had taken Lupe and Roberto's place. But they were nowhere to be seen. Maybe they didn't know that they were to sit in the special place near this empty manger. Father Vasquez, we are so sorry to be late. It was Lupe and Roberto calling out as they rushed into the courtyard. Did we ruin everything? No, no, Father Vasquez said. Sister Angie's friends were here. They led the procession, but now I can't find them. Go quickly and sit by the manger. What friends? Lupe whispered to Roberto. Sister Angie woke with a start. Las Posadas would be over. Everyone would be having their hot chocolate and cookies. The villagers would be back in an hour or two. I hope Lupe and Roberto did well, she thought. Sister Angie was feeling so much better. She looked out of the window. The snow had almost stopped. Drifts covered the rooftops and the street below. I'll just go over to the church and light a candle, she said to herself. She bundled up and put the key to the church in her pockets. Sister Angie crossed the street and stood in front of the church. Footprints in the snow on the steps led up to the door. She didn't think much of it. Maybe some turistas. They came at all hours expecting the church to be open. Inside the church was dark except for the candle burning in front of the Blessed Sacrament. I'll light a candle in front of the carving, she said. She took an unlit candle and struck a match. The candle flared up and steadied, settled into a steady glow. Sister Angie knelt down and placed her candle in front of the carving. Oh, Maria, oh, Jose, she prayed, eyes closed. My heart will always be open to you so that the Holy Child will have a place to be born. Sister Angie opened her eyes and there, in front of her, she saw wet footprints leading to the carving. She looked up. The cloaks of Maria and Jose were covered in fresh snow. The end. What do you think that meant? Who had played Maria and Jose? All right, let's get our paper. We're almost finished filling in the four main traditions we're learning about this season. So we're gonna work on Las Posadas. We just read a little bit about the major part of Las Posadas. So if you need to, pause and then run and get your paper and a pencil. All right, what kind of decorations? They talked about two of these in the story. Um, the bags with candles to light the path for the journey to search for a place for Joseph and Mary to have the baby Jesus born. The nativity scene which is also reenacted. And there's also Star of David pinatas, and there are usually a lot of them hung. So here's what I'm writing. Nativity, pinatas, bags with candles, streamers. What else did you notice or can you think of? If you need to, pause the video so you can write on your paper. Ooh, yum. Look at the food. So there's tamales. And I do not speak Spanish. So I'm going to try and pronounce this. And I apologize in advance to all of those that speak. Spanish properly. Buenuelos de viento. 
and um, in English we would say Mexican fritters. It's kind of like a donut, a crispy donut, deep fried. And then um, after Las Posadas, to end Las Posadas actually, is Three Kings Day, and they traditionally make a Three Kings bread. And if you are lucky enough to find the slice that has the little baby Jesus, then that means that the following year you will have the honor of making the Three Kings bread, which is a great honor. So let's watch it. I'm putting tamales, tacos, beans, fritters, rice, and Three Kings bread on mine. Remember, I can read what I've already written a lot quicker than you can write, so please feel free to hit the pause button and then just hit play and start the video again. And they'll start right up from where you left off. Okay, clothing. Well, of course they have all of the people that have been chosen to reenact Mary and Joseph's search for a room and they dress up in costumes. You also have people that are wearing regular clothes and people in traditional clothes, like this traditional dress, um, to do some dancing. So I'm going to put in mind costumes, regular clothes, and traditional dresses. Here are some of the activities that are part of Las Posadas. So of course, the main event, which is the reenactment of the trip to Bethlehem and busting open the pinatas to get the toys and candy that's hidden inside and going out singing. So here's what I'm doing. I'm going to write singing, busting the pinata open, and reenacting the search for the inn. So you can hit pause. And I'm going to show you the final work. So if you've been doing this with each of our lessons, you now have a completed sheet to turn in. You wanna make sure your name is on this, okay? Be sure your name is on there. And if you need to, pause this video and you're welcome to use my video and use my page here to finish filling in yours. And all of our videos for our social studies lessons can be found in our materials section, in our files and materials. So please feel free to go back and watch any of the videos to learn about all of the holidays. Next time, I'd like you to bring a pencil, scissors, and your crayons. We are going to do a little art. We're going to make something. All right, I'll see you next time.